Okay, in this video, we're just going to look at a little fun project that's called a laser trip wire. Now, basically, a laser trip wire is just detecting a broken light beam and setting off an alarm. So, if you look at my bench, I have a light source, it's just a flashlight, and it's feeding over to my detecting circuitry, which is an Arduino Nano, and a light dependent resistor in a voltage divider circuit, which is feeding the ADC input of the Arduino Nano for detection. Then I have alarm circuitry with a beeper and an LED. So if I break the beam, it sets off the alarm. So the circuitry is detecting the broken light beam and activating one of the GPIO lines, which is triggering the alarm circuitry. Now there's a variation on this. When I break the alarm, it's triggered until it's reset with, this, with, the, with the reset button. So this way, the alarm will stay on until it is reset. Now if I move my light source back a bit to a point, it's going to trigger the alarm because now the light source is too wide and doesn't have the intensity to trigger the circuit. So for more accuracy and, and better range, we need to use a, a laser beam, a light laser, for the light source. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the LDR circuit. So basically it's just a voltage divider. So we have the LDR in series with a 1K ohm resistor. An output voltage is fed into an ADC channel of the Arduino Nano A0. So now when we block the light that's striking the face of the LDR, the LDR resistance will increase and the voltage output to our ADC will decrease. So our ADC value will decrease from 1023 towards 0. So when we detect a drop in our ADC value, we can run some code that will turn on and off a device using the GPIO pins. Okay, here's my tripwire detection circuitry. Now the heart of the circuit is an Arduino Nano, and I have a light dependent resistor in series with a 1K resistor, and the output is fed into channel A0 of the ADC of the Arduino Nano for detection. Now when an alarm is detected, one of the GPIO lines goes high and drives this transistor, which will turn on the beeper and turn on uh, this LED. Now I have a push button switch and it's fed into one of the GPIO inputs and it, it detects a, a button press to reset the alarm when it's in its latching mode. Okay, here's the code running on my Nano for the laser tripwire and it's written in fourth. Now there's actually two programs here. There's trip, see here, and there's trip one. Now if we run trip, that's a non-latching alarm. And if we run trip one, that's a latching alarm. So in the non-latching alarm, we run trip. First thing it does is it selects ADC channel A0. Then it initializes pin eight as an output and pin two as an input for the GPIO. Then it goes into a begin until loop. Now it's gonna take an ADC reading and if it's less than 700, that indicates the beam is broken. That's my threshold level, 700, ADC value. And if the beam is broken and it gets the ADC value less than 700, then pin 8 on the GPIO will go high, which will turn on the alarm, which will turn on the beeper and the LED. Now, if the ADC level is greater than 700, then pin 8 will go low and keep the alarm off. That will continue in a loop, begin until, until loop, and it will always be monitoring the ADC value and if it's less than 700, it triggers the alarm. And if it's greater than 700, uh, it, the alarm will, will come off. They'll continue until we hit any key on the keyboard and it will come out of the program. So that's our simple non-latching trip program. Now if we go down to trip one, that's our latching uh, program. So it's similar, it selects A0, uh, ADC uh, channel A0, and initializes pin 8 as, as output and pin 2 as an input on the GPIO. And it goes into a begin until loop and it reads the ADC value and if, if it's less than 700 it turns pin 8 high which alarm will go on then it goes into another begin until loop waiting for the pin 2 to go low which is the key press which is the button the alarm reset button and it will stay there until the button is pressed then it will come out of the begin until loop and pin 8 will go low it will turn the alarm off and then it continues on in the loop waiting for the next break, and then resetting the alarm uh, with pin 2. So that's the code. It's pretty simple. So you have your choice of non-latching and latching alarms 
uh, in this code. Okay, the response time of a light dependent resistor is around 25 milliseconds, so it's fairly slow. So you need to break the beam for at least 25 milliseconds to get a good reading out of the LDR into the nano. But even at 25 milliseconds, it's, uh, it's fairly fast for general purpose detecting. I could use a pencil. So you can see it's not too bad for anything that's moving. Okay, here's my laser light source. It's a KY008 5 milliwatt laser diode. I got it online for about two dollars. And it has three terminals and plugs into a breadboard. So the terminal labeled S is your plus five volts and the terminal labeled minus is your, is your ground. So you can just power it stand alone, but I wanted to have more control, so I'm powering it through my GPIO of, of uh, the Nano. And then I have a push button switch hooked up to one of the GPIO input lines uh, to control the, the laser. So by pressing the button, I could toggle it. So I just wanted a little bit more control. So right now, if I press the button, I could toggle the laser on and off just by pressing the button on and off. Now, a word of caution about these lasers, don't look directly into the laser and watch out for reflections and don't point it at anybody because you could cause harm to your eyes. Now I could run other programs for different functions so I could have a function it's just a single shot so when I press a button I get a single shot and I could run other programs there's another program that's a rapid fire so with the mecha controller, I have more control over the over the laser uh, for other other projects. Okay, have my laser pointed at my light dependent resistor, which is on my breadboard and being monitored by the nano. So if I block the light beam, the laser light beam, you see we get the same results as when I was using the flashlight. But now with using a laser beam, we have a much greater range. We could actually shoot this beam across the length of a room and we could pick up the, light, the laser beam being broken and, and setting off the alarm. So I hope this video gives you some ideas how you guys can make your own laser trip wire.